shipping hub in Northeast Asia. Reaching the world from Northeast China, Port of Dandong. You can reach me many ways, it don't matter how and when. Simply make the time for the best time of your life. Malaysia truly Asia, it's the place with it all. Welcome to Up Close. Today we meet with Singaporean singer and actor Leon J. Williams. With four films being released in 2012 and a huge following of fans, Leon is an actor on his rise to stardom. Leon, welcome to Up Close. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> well, you know, we put you in this setting because we thought we'd bring a little bit of Southeast Asia to you Actually, here in Beijing. Yeah, this is, um, this is a perfect setting for me because um, in Singapore it's pretty much like that. It, it's hot all the time and um, I love the pool, you know, it's like a, a water, you know, like sunlight. It makes perfect. you feel right at home. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Just for you, Leon. Okay. Um, so this is a huge year for you. You have four movies, maybe five, that are being released this year. Um, actually, one movie is already out. It's been out and um, it's, it's finished its run, uh, I think a month ago. And I've got maybe another three more coming out and uh, pretty one more maybe in 2013. Um, I've spent the past uh, one and a half years uh, doing the past uh, doing five movies, and that's what I usually do. I kind of like just uh, do movies for about a year. I just hide out, and just work on projects, just and then work, work, work. yeah, and then I come out and I meet everyone. You know, I do the red carpet thing, do the premieres, um, meet my fans and everyone else. Uh, for maybe six months or a year when the movies come out and I, I kind of like it that way yeah and then so you're saying in 2013 we're not gonna see you anymore you're gonna be back working and, <laughs> and making it's, films again it, it's hard to say because um, I kind of base my work on the scripts I get uh, if I if I get like a nice script a good script that I like and I want to do the character um, we'll try and work the, uh, the schedule around it uh, because it's kind of hard to uh, to see when the movie's gonna launch like something I've done before because I have to attend a premiere and if we're working on a project we have to like take some days off to attend a premiere so it's kind of like just working out time schedules so it's, it's not too bad yep. right how to, how to manage all of what everybody wants from you these days yeah. I, I've been when managing it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about these uh, four or five films that you worked on in the last year and a half I, is there one that you're super excited about with mm, yes uh, there is one um, I've done a, a period uh, movie with uh, Li Xiaolu um, it's uh, Lulu. It, yeah, Lulu. Yeah, you've met Lulu. I think if you've uh, had her on your show, mm -hmm. um, it was a really interesting movie for me because it was the first time I, I did like a, a period in uh, set in the 1940s, and it's based on the, um, the revolution, the Communist Party uh, in Chongqing. Uh, it's kind of like the Jie uh, Fang Bei story. Uh, that's kind of like the whole base for the story, and it's my first history-based. Uh, historically based uh, story and we put a bit of a modern element in because it's kind of like a what they call in, in Chinese Chuan Ye and that, that that's kind of like someone from the present going back into the past so were you like a time so, traveler uh, no no I'm the guy in the past and oh, okay. Lulu's gonna come in from the present to try and save my life because she knows I'm gonna die because mm. it's kind of like a revolution um, but it's a very strong story and I'm looking forward to that because it's the first time I've done like a, a movie in the 1940s. The whole, um, the whole wardrobe, the whole setting, it's kind of like a mini war movie. Uh, I get to play with guns. Uh, it, it was a fun experience. Um, but unfortunately, I, I fell down. Uh, I hurt myself. You fell down? Yeah. What happened? When, um, how did that happen? There was a scene where I had to like run and uh, I tripped and I fell. And I, I, I pulled um, the left ligament on my ankle and I didn't know it was that bad, and I carried on filming. Um, after that, right, I had to see a doctor, and I was in a wheelchair for about a week, and uh, I had to be on crutches for the rest of the movie, and I almost had to give it up, and I was really upset because I was so much looking forward to uh, doing this movie, um, uh, uh, The Game of the Brave, and 
I, I was afraid I was I wasn't gonna be able to finish it. You know. But uh, so you were on crutches. So oh, you'd yeah. have crutches, and then when you needed to film, you'd put them aside oh, and, yeah. and, and do your scene. I was pretty much hopping around. The director had a had a had an idea. He's like, let's just make you like a. Uh, uh, we, we'll do a scene where one of the soldiers beat you up and you, you can't walk, you know, so pretty much I had to bring my injury into the script. They, you know, yeah. I always wondered what, how they did that, you know, if something happens to an actor and actress, how they write that into a story. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. I, I'm, I'm really grateful to the um, director and the producers because I was almost ready to give up um, because I couldn't, I was thinking this, it's a war movie, I have to run, I have to fight, you know, I have to like jump around and I, I couldn't do any of those stuff. Um, did you have to get yourself, before the movie, did you have to get yourself fit for the movie? Like you had said you had to oh, jump yeah, around. Yeah. Tell me about that. I've had a lot of uh, physical roles uh, in the past year. So when this movie came around, I, I, was, I was ready for it. You know? So I went in and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do my best. Um, so when I fell, I was like, okay, this is not my best anymore, you know. But I had a lot of support from the whole crew and the, the rest of the cast. So I, I finished the project. It took like two months to, to do the whole project. Um, pretty much on my ninth day, I fell down. It, so really early on. Yeah, it was really early on. And um, I, I was really afraid I wasn't going to finish it. But um, I guess we just soldiered on and we did it. Uh, I went through a lot of pain. And actually because of that, right, my, my, I'm, I'm still limping um, three months later. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, I kind of aggravated the injury because of work. Um, but I, I saw the um, some of the footage where it's been cut out. And I think it, it's really, really, it's a really good movie. Well, if anything, yeah. you know, the the limping that you do in the movie will be very authentic. Yeah, <laughs> I tell the audiences the limping is not exactly. acting. It we'll is have real. to tell everybody this is not acting. This is real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the other four projects. Is there? Um, I, I think everyone knows that I started out doing TV. So the past year, I've been dabbling in movies. Uh, I started doing my first. I started my first movie uh, in 2007, and um, doing like one movie a year. But the past uh, year, I've had a lot of good scripts, uh, characters that I, I really want to play. You played a gangster in one. Oh yeah, I, uh, that was a movie in in Taiwan. I, I was gangster rock. I, I I played like a really uh, disgusting guy. I'd like. Was that know. fun? Because I, yeah. from what I hear, you are very nice. You're, oh, you're, you're a nice guy. <laughs> I you're like little do you know, but you're a very nice guy. So was that? I think. Was I think. It I think. Difficult to play a bad guy. Um, I guess the uh, it, it was a good start for me because the, uh, it was a it was a bad guy role. It wasn't like a it was a gangster role, but he had a heart of gold. He wasn't like a bad bad gangster. He okay. he he was a nice gangster. You know, he's just like, you know, I had to grow a beard. I had to um, perm my hair. Was I had to get a tan. To grow a beard? Uh, it was all right, but I kind of like uh, my mom didn't recognize me on the posters <laughs> because she's like, "That's not you." I'm like, "Yes, it's me." You know, because <laughs> uh, I I never kept um, that kind of look for uh, that kind of image for any of my shows before. So it kind of like uh, shocked audiences, I guess. It shocked my fans. Um, it was a kind of a risk, but I wanted to do something different. I was doing a lot of idol drama for for about three or four years, and um, came. Every, everyone thinks of me as a very um, it is guy in a suit. I was a guy in a suit, and I just wanted audiences and my fans to see me in a different light. So when this opportunity came along, I, I was like. The director had a lot of faith in me, so we, we did the project, and I think up to now, right, it's still one of my favorite uh, projects that I've worked on. Yeah. I heard you had to smoke. Do you, do, are you normally a smoker? No, no. I actually um, got someone to help me out uh, to, to, to learn how to smoke. Friends who smoke, right? I, I would just uh, sit down like with them, smoking. and I'm like, okay, show me how you smoke. You know, and I, I'd be back in Singapore. I'd be in Beijing. I was working on a, a, a drama as well while I was like doing homework for the for Gangster Rock, and and I had to learn to smoke. It wasn't it wasn't easy. Um, I was smoking for two months. You know, I'm not proud to say that I was smoking <laughs> for two months. But <laughs> was it easy yeah. to quit after? Uh, it was okay for me because uh, I guess I was never really into it. So the the day we finished. Um, filming, right? I, I just didn't have to smoke anymore, and, and it was good. It was. Good. I, I'm, I'm kind of a, a workout freak, you know. I like to work out. Um, I eat healthy. I, I, I try and sleep enough. So, smoking to me wasn't part of my my deal. It wasn't part of my whole lifestyle. Your body is your yeah, trouble. yeah. So I, I, I kind of like. It was easy to get in and out. I mean, it wasn't easy to get in, but it was easy to get out. Right. Yeah. So movies. Do, do you ever fear that you're going to get typecast into a certain? Um, I think I've already been typecast uh, with all the uh, the what? dramas I've done. Right. Yeah. I, I like I said. The I was, romantic. I was the guy in a suit, uh, romances the the women, you know, and um, I walk away, you know, it's like Prince Charming. 
Uh, it's, it's not a bad uh, character to be typecast in. Uh, but but recently I, I've done the movies with with with, um, with a lot of different roles, and I hope that I can break out of this shell and let people know me more as an as an actor and maybe as myself. Because when I did Gangster Rock, right, I could see a lot of myself in the character. Um, do you try to bring yourself into each character? I, I think with every role you do, there has to be a certain element of yourself in in the character. Um, the, it, it's kind of like how you let the character grow in, in the movie or drama that you do. Um, I, I have a lot of, a uh, little bit of myself in, in most of the characters I, I, I've been in. You know, like, um, uh, the, the last movie I did was a Death Zone, and I had to play a bad guy in it. That, that was when I was a cold-blooded killer. But you keep talking about these roles where you're playing a bad guy. I think you like these. <laughs> it's been fun after playing a good guy for so many years. Yeah. Um, I did a couple of bad guy roles, and uh, Death Zone was, was interesting because it was very physical. We did all the uh, filming in, in the mountains in Yunnan, and uh, we didn't see any for the whole month, right? We were just stuck in the forest, in the jungles, and it was, it was pretty depressing. Yeah, but it was physical. It arduous, right? But yeah, it was. Uh, we had to climb mountains and jump in the rivers, you know, fight. Uh, we got hurt, you know, for sure. You know, like um, Patrick Tang, the, the other guy, you know, my co-actor, we, we did like a punching scene and I got, I really got punched. <laughs> and you, we kind of like rehearsed the, the, um, the scenes, right? But when it happens, it happens, you know. But I think the director used that, that take, so it was, it was good. It, was, it wasn't <laughs> not worth it. Yeah. Authenticity is yeah. the key. All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to hear more from Leon J. Williams. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Up Close. I'm here with actor Leon J. Williams. Um, Leon, so we know that you grew up in Singapore and you grew up speaking English and now most of your projects are all in Mandarin Chinese. Um, how's that been for you? It's, uh, it's been an interesting experience. I've been acting for about eight years now and um, I started kind of late. Um, I moved to Taiwan when I was 28 and it was kind of like a, it was an accident. Uh, I became an actor by accident. Uh, I was doing a lot of uh, TV commercials. Uh, I was modeling for uh, almost 10 years. And when I went to Taiwan, it was just to do a couple of TV commercials. Um, but when I got there, um, a TV station was going to do like an idol drama. And they asked me to audition for the part. And I thought it was going to be a fun thing, maybe like a cameo appearance by a model. So I went for it. I didn't know later that the um, the agents told me like hey, you got the part and you got to stay here for like two years now. I was like, what? <laughs> two years for the yeah. TV drama. Yeah, well, the TV drama was for six months, but it was an acting contract, and they just didn't want to do one drama with me. We had like a two, three drama deal, and I was like, this wasn't what I signed up for, and I had a, a I almost didn't do the part, take the part because I wasn't prepared. I, I was like, you want me to speak Chinese? But they were like, it's an ABC kind of like a role, so you have to speak English and Chinese, and we want you mainly for your English. And I said, we have over 50% of the scripts in Chinese, and I can't speak Mandarin, you know, and I really couldn't speak Mandarin then. But uh, you were ABC, so you could speak kind of American accented Mandarin, right? Oh, uh, yeah, but I, I can't read. Um, in Singapore, everything's in, in English. Um, all the reading materials in English, and official language is English. So I, I didn't have a problem with the English part, but I had a problem with the uh, Chinese part. And but I thought it would be a fun challenge, and I've always wanted to, to learn to speak Mandarin. I, I took it up in, in school. I just never had a, a passing grade, so um, <laughs> I took the opportunity and said if I stayed in Taiwan, maybe my, my Mandarin would improve, and that would be something that I, I should have done many years back. I, I didn't know it was going to be the most challenging part of my life, uh, the six months that we took to finish my first drama, um, Tian Guo Jiayi, uh, Heaven's Wedding Rope. It, that was like, it was pretty much hell for me. Uh, yeah, I was lonely, I had no friends in Taiwan, um, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, I, I couldn't understand the people around me at all, be it acting or not acting. Um, the only time I was ever myself was I, when I made like the weekly phone calls back back home to my mom, my brother, and my friends, you know. And uh, I actually remembered I sent out an email to everyone saying that 
I don't have much time to communicate with anyone for the next six months because um, I'm too busy like learning my scripts and trying to get enough rest. Did you have tutors to help you? Pretty much everyone in my, my management company was my tutor because a anyone who spoke Chinese could, could teach me how to, how to do my scripts. I had to like pinging and every word and I had to like uh, what they call in Chinese Sibei. Everything had to be memorized. So I, I, I can't look at my first drama right now and say I did a great job. Do you watch? Do you watch like all of your? Do you go I, back and watch? Actually, no. I your haven't watched. Uh, I haven't really watched a complete. Um, some I've done like six dramas, but I haven't. I have to say I haven't watched everything. I've seen the first couple because I didn't know where my Chinese went wrong. Yeah, but pretty much I'm, I'm, I'm watching my dramas just to see what I can improve on. And not too much on like, oh, if I look good or not. I, I can't <laughs> yeah. imagine how tough that, that, that must have been because it was your first acting job. Yeah. And it was, you know, like you said, in a lang half of it in a language that you weren't really used to speaking. I can't imagine that pressure. Yeah. It, it was really pressurizing, but I guess um, because of the pressure, right, um, a lot of uh, the, the press and the fans, they, they kind of like, they could see it. I, I don't know, I guess I, I did a lot of... Um, interviews as well in between the, uh, the filming of the drama because in Taiwan what they do is, um, is the same as in Korea where they shoot an episode they air it and then you do interviews in between and we kind of like change the script as the, um, the audience wants it you know and it, it, it's really taxing you, you couldn't get a day off and you, you can't say you're sick if you're sick they're just gonna change the script and, but you started yeah. becoming a very popular at that time, right? People were watching the drama. So along with this, yeah, it was a lot of hard work, but you're getting some notoriety, you're getting some fame. Yeah, Do was, you yes. did you enjoy that? It, it was strange because when, when I did the drama, right, I, I never before I went to Taiwan, I had no idea what, what an idol drama was. I, I never really watched anything in Chinese. So I had to start doing my homework. I had to understand what a drama was, what what do the um the Chinese the Chinese society, what, what, are, what are they watching, the Chinese audiences. So it was pretty hard for me, not just for the role, it was pretty hard getting to the whole lifestyle of the, uh, the whole entertainment industry. Um, I never for once thought that the show was going to be uh, so watched, so, so much watched by, by so many people. And I never expected to be, I, I was like, yeah, the in thing for that six months while the drama was on and when I started walking the streets people started calling me initially by the name in the show and then after about two months they started knowing my real name and it was a, it was a, a surreal experience for me did you like it um, I can't say I totally liked it I I was um, the paparazzi had pictures of me buying newspapers buying my lunch you know <laughs> and it made all kinds of stories about me and I, I didn't like that part you know but slowly I figured it's it's part and parcel of being an actor being in the limelight uh, you take the good and the bad, right. yeah. So pretty right. much, I, I chose to embrace it. And when I did my my second drama about a year after the first one, I was more prepared. So up to now, right, I think my favorite drama would be the second one I did after um, Tian Guo Jia Yi. Um, that was called uh, Green Forest, and we did like another six month project from from summer all the way to winter, and we shot in the mountains, and it was kind of like a a long twenty episode movie because it was really difficult to film in the, um, in the mountains when it rains all the time and we had like typhoons all the time in Taiwan. Um, but I still like that, that drama. It's more challenging. Oh yeah. It must have been um, tough for you to be in Taiwan. Like you said, you weren't prepared to move to Taiwan. And because I, I hear that you're also very close to your family back in Singapore. I am. You were raised by your mother. Uh, yeah, my mom's a single parent. Uh, I, I, uh, our family, my, my dad kind of left us when, when we were, when I was five. and. My mom, uh, she's been my pillow of support for forever, forever, even up to now. And without her support, right, I wouldn't have been able to carry on. Um, when I did my first drama in Taiwan, um, the first three months was really tough, and I, I almost gave up. Um, my mom could hear it from my voice, and she could hear the uh, deterioration from the first couple of weeks to the third month. And she actually flew into Taiwan, and she, she stayed with me for a month, and just, just to like, just to back me up. And, and it helped a lot. It gave me the energy to, to finish the whole project because I was on the verge of giving up. Even when I finished the, um, the whole project, right, um, after six months, I, I didn't know I was gonna carry on. Um, the first thing, the first thing I, I felt was, that's it for me, you know, I can't go through this again. It, it was so mental, it was so much, it was mental. It was really bad for, for, for your head. 
You, know, you, you don't know what you're thinking of all the time. I, I was confused. But I guess um, I started singing after my first drama. We did like a, a single and I, I got to do what I like because um, I like singing. Um, it, it's a fun thing to do. been singing? Yeah, I, I remember when I was 17 and uh, we, we did like a, a Bee Gees, me, my brother and my uncle, right? We, 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 <laughs> the Bee Gees? Yeah, we, we did like a, a, a kind of TV competition with the Bee Gees and it was fun. I've always liked to sing, but I never thought I could make it as a singer. But when we did the um, single, I, um, I sang Can't Smile Without You by Barry Manilow. We did a cover and it was fun. I got to meet fans. So tell me, you know, all of this kind of ha started and happened because Back when you were younger, you were a model. You were Mr. Singapore, is that right? Mr. Singapore, yeah, and you were yeah. also international, Mr. International Man. Yeah, there was a male pageant. Um, there was a male beauty pageant, you know, <laughs> in, uh, back in 2001. And the only reason I, I actually got into the pageant was because I was modeling in Hong Kong then, and I never went home. So my brother kind of um, put in my name, submitted my name for the competition, and I got selected from the pictures. And he called me and he said, there's a letter saying that you're going to come back and, um, you know. Wait, your brother submitted the pictures yeah, for you? Yeah, He wanted to, he, wa he, he, was, he and my mom collaborated to try and get me to come home. Because if I had to do the competition, I had to be home for like two months. So it worked. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll come home, you know. I came home and I, I, I did, um, I did the, um, the pageant and I won. I won the Singapore one and I was pretty surprised. And then I went on to represent Singapore in, the, um, in Puerto Rico. Uh, for the international pageant and I won that one and that was when I was really really surprised What is it like being a, a man in a, in a male beauty? I mean, I've talked to women yeah. who have been in beauty pageants. How's it different think, from men? I think um, there's not much of a difference uh, But I would think you do it when you're in your younger years because I, I had like um, I had to do like I had to be like in, in my, my swimming trunks, you know, and, and in front of like a thousand people the audience, you know, and I had to speak a little bit of Spanish, and I, it, it was a, <laughs> it was a weird did you say experience. In Spanish? Uh, 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 how do how, how do you introduce it? Como estás? You know, mi nombre es Leon Williams. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> 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 All right, we're gonna hear more from Leon when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So what's surprising me about all of this, Leon, is I heard you were actually very, very shy. Oh yes, I was. Um, growing up, right, I think it's coming from a single single parent family. My mom used to work um, and I remember going back home in the, in the afternoons after school and she would keep my lunch uh, or tea in like a little flask you know, to keep it warm. And I would just stay home and, and do my own stuff. You know, I do my homework, I have my own meals. And I think that that didn't really contribute to being sociable. So I was very quiet as a, as a child, as a kid. And um, even when I grew up in my teens, right, I, I couldn't ask for directions if I was lost. I, I couldn't ask teachers questions if I didn't understand a, a question, you know, I couldn't do anything like that. I would rather just ask a close friend of mine later or go home and ask my family try to figure it out on yeah, your own. Yeah. So how did you break out of that? I guess when I started modeling, right, um, you really got to interact with people. I, I had to pick up some modeling classes, so the, um, the, uh, the instructor and the fellow students, you, you have to interact. And that started me off. And then when I started doing modeling assignments, every assignment you meet someone different. And you're really just forced to even introduce yourself and do the kind of things that they want you to do. Uh, TV commercials, where they require you to do a little bit of acting. And I guess when I when I went on to um, to start acting full time, um, the TV commercial experience I had uh, definitely helped out. I wasn't camera shy. Confidence, confidence builder. Yeah, confidence. So I have a question, I, and I always wonder about this with people who are models or actors and and good looking ones. Did you always? Did you know that you were good looking? Actually, no, no. When I was growing up, right, I was the only um, mixed guy in. Um, in school and a lot of people speak spoke Chinese uh, but they only speak English to me because they're like that's that mixed he's guy he can't Eurasian, he's, right? yeah he's Eurasian he can't speak Chinese you know we just speak English to him I felt like an outsider a lot even when I was um, in Singapore we have to um, 
do national service in the army. I was in the army for a couple of years, and that wasn't fun for me. Uh, it was a part of my life I would like to forget. Yeah, because I was pretty much abused by the um, by some officers in the um, in, in the army. Because you were Eurasian, yeah, half Eurasian. Eurasian. Yeah, yeah. It, it was pretty. It was tolerable, but it wasn't. It wasn't a fun experience for me. Yeah. So. I never thought that um, being Eurasian would help me out in any way until I started modeling, and that's when I realized that uh, I could look like um, <clears throat> I could look like anyone in any Asian country. <laughs> you know, I could fit in wherever I am. I fit in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or Western countries too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, yeah, with the um, global, yeah, cosmopolitan lifestyle now. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, from this shy little boy, you've become. A very accomplished actor, very prolific in the last few years. A lot of movies coming out, um, and you also have a very strong following on your Weibo. Uh -huh. So now you're, you know, hey, tell me, tell me about Weibo, this phenomenon of, oh, of Weibo. Actually, I, I had to like get used to Weibo as well. Uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, because um, when I started out eight years back, right, they didn't have Weibo, right. and it it was a whole new media, and I I, I wasn't really into it. But my management company, they were like, Weibo is like the in thing now. You have to learn how to write you it. You have to do it. Yeah, right. and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll figure it out, you know. But it's a good way to interact with your fans, uh, see what they want. Um, obviously, I can't write Chinese, so I started writing English thoughts and stuff, you know. And I, I've been taking pictures of a lot of stuff that I eat because I travel I a lot. I saw that. Yeah. It was you at dinner or something. You're like, it's dinner oh, yeah, time. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I try and like eat as many different stuff as possible whenever I'm, I'm in a different country, different city. Um, Weibo is like a good way to communicate with, with fans, tell them what's going on, uh, tell them your thoughts. Um, I, I have to write in Chinese. I can't write in Chinese, but I'll tell like my assistant to translate some of the Weibo stuff that I write. Right. It's, it's a way for people to know more about yeah, your personal is. life. Yeah. I think the, um, the bridge between um, actors, singers and, and fans have, have become a little bit closer. The bridge has been closed because um, of the Weibo thing, the Twitter Weibo. Yeah. And of course a lot of women are wondering this and I wouldn't be doing my job if I, w if I did not ask uh -huh. this question. Um, do you have, a, are you attached? Do you have a girlfriend? Are you married? Um, I'm not married. Um, I'm attached. I've been with my girlfriend for um, seven years now. A lot of really disappointed women uh, watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've been um, I've been in a relationship for for many years. Seven and years. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah, it is. It is. Tell a long me about time. her. Um, she's she's really nice and sweet, and she understands my job. Um, her family's great. So for me, it's it's really important to be with someone who understands what I do because I'm not in in a place all the time. Um, sometimes she doesn't even know where I am. You know, like what time you're gonna get off work. Um, but we kind of make it work out, you know, with the visits and uh, she's from Taiwan, so I go back to Taiwan as much as I can, see her and her family, um, she can come to Singapore, you know, we, we kind of work it out. It's, it's been tough, but it's been working out so far. And seven years, so you've been together pretty much since your career started yeah, taking yeah. off. I think in a way, right, uh, she speaks more Chinese and it did help me a lot. So what's next for you? What's what, what what's in the plans? Is there some sort of dream role that you're looking at? I, I would love to be in a, a Marvel movie. You know, like recently Avengers, I, I caught it in the uh, cinema, and um, I heard that Iron Man three is going to be out. It's going to be be filmed in China, and I would love to have a role in Iron Man or any of the uh, future Avengers movies. You know, I think it would be a great experience because I grew up reading the comics and I still have like a, a really old issue of um, the Avengers in, in my collection. I hope it's not like in, in a bad state. It's probably, it, yeah, it's probably worth a lot of money now. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but if, if in terms of uh, Chinese movies, right, um, I would like to do something uh, like a James Bond thing, but kind of like bring a bit of comedy element in. Kind of like a role like a, a Get Smart you know, mm. Steve Carell and Get Smart, or uh, Rowan Atkinson yeah, in Johnny sure English. Yep. Yeah, I just want to do, I like comedy, and I've been doing a lot of action roles as well, so maybe we can incorporate that, and I would love to do a role like that. So diversify. Oh, yeah. So, you know, but do you like your martinis? Oh, uh, well, I, I can drink stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you could be the next Asian James Bond. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. All right, well, Leon, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers at home for tuning in. We'll see you next weekend on Up Close. Bye for now. Insurance is sunshine, sharing, hope, and warmth, always by your side.
Sunshine Insurance Group.